Alright, hello everybody, and today I'm going to be defining the exponential matrix. So when you have some random number, real or complex, it doesn't really matter, and you raise it to some matrix up here. So pretty much you have the matrix in the exponent, and we want to figure out if this thing right here has any particular value. And the matrix we're going to be working with in this video is a 2x2 two two matrix. And we actually want our matrix to be diagonalizable. And this factor right here will be very useful later on. So in particular, in this video, we just want to have a look at E raised to some matrix A, just to make things a little bit uh, easier for us. So how exactly can we define this thing right here? Well, as I said before, we want A to be a diagonalizable matrix, because if A is a diagonalizable matrix, then what we can actually do is we can define powers of A. So if we have A raised to the nth power, that's actually exactly equal to P d to the n P inverse. Because if you imagine taking this and multiplying n times together, you're going to have consecutive p inverse and p pairs. And those are just going to cancel out, leaving you with a bunch of d's hanging around in the middle. And then you're going to have n of those, and they're just going to combine to make d to the n. So this is a true statement right here. And if we can define a to the n, why not make use of power series to actually express this exponential right here? Because if you know the Maclaurin series of e to the x, for example, that's exactly the sum running from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. And we can use this factor right here for our matrix. So if we want to have e to the n instead, then, well, by this definition right here, that's exactly the sum running from n equals 0 to infinity of a to the n over n factorial. And this is what we're going to be using to define e to the a right here. So you see a is our diagonalizable matrix right here. Now we know how to express a to some power n. It's just this thing right here. So why not plug this thing for our a to the n? So that's exactly the sum running from n equals 0 to an e to infinity of p d to the n p inverse over n factorial and you see our sum right here that's with respect to n and this p and this p inverse right here they're just kind of like constants so what we can actually do is we can bring them out of the sum this one's at the front and the back respectively because we're dealing with matrices and order matters so this is going to leave us with p sum from n equals zero to infinity uh, d to the n over n factorial times p inverse like so. And the nice thing is when you have d to the n right here, if you have some diagonal matrix, let's say with entries d1, 0, 0, d2, and you raise that matrix to some power n, that's exactly these separate entries right here are raised to the nth powers themselves. And you can prove this fact quite easily using some repeated matrix multiplication. But using this fact right here, we can kind of transform our expression a little bit. Because now what it's going to become, it's going to become P, the sum from n equals 0 to infinity. And let's plug this definition of a diagonal matrix in for our d to the n right here. So now we're gonna have one over n factorial, then d to the n, that's exactly this diagonal matrix raised to the nth power, but we know that it, that's exactly this whole matrix right here. So that's exactly d1 to the n, zero, zero, d2 to the n, close off that sum, p inverse like so. And while we're at it, why not bring this constant, this one over n factorial, into our matrix? So if we do that, we're just going to divide everything through by n factorial right here. And the reason why I'm doing this is I want to get some kind of expression that we recognize inside of this matrix right here. And also notice we're summing a bunch of matrices together right here. And if we sum matrices together, all we're actually doing is we're also summing the entries together. So here we're summing the matrices from n equals 0 up to infinity. And that's the exact same thing as summing each of these individual entries right here from 0 to infinity as well. And we don't have to worry about these zeros because they're just 0. So we can rewrite this thing right here as P times a big matrix. And we're going to move this sum into this these entries right here. So we're going to have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of d1 to the n power over n factorial, 0, 0, and then another sum from n equals 0 to infinity of d to the n power over n factorial, 
close off that matrix and we have a P inverse hanging off the ends. And you see the reason why we did that because these two uh, sums right here look very familiar because remember we said that e to the x was the sum running from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n power of n factorial and you see here instead of x's we only, we only have d1 and d2 so these are pretty much the Maclaurin series of e to the x evaluated at d1 and d2 respectively so this is the exact same thing as p e to the d1 0 0 e to the d2 then a p inverse like so so what exactly did we just find out right here we found out that if we if we raise e to some matrix a and if a can be decomposed into the form pdp inverse like so then e to the a is this this expression right here we still have our p and p inverse like so but instead of our d in the middle right here we're still going to have a diagonal matrix but these entries right here we're just going to have e to that entry instead so, so let's actually do a very quick example right here let's suppose we have the matrix a being equal to 1, negative 1, 2, 4. And I'm not going to diagonalize this matrix in this video. It's just going to take a bit too long. But if you do diagonalize this matrix right here, you're going to get something similar to 1, 1, negative 2, negative 1, 3, 0, 0, 2, and then negative 1, negative 1, 2, 1. So this right here is our D, our diagonal matrix. So if we want to raise e to the a power, then we're still keeping our P and P inverse right here. So 1, 1, negative 2, negative 1, and negative 1, negative 1, 2, 1. But instead, for this matrix right here, what we're going to do is we're going to take E raised to the third power, 0, 0, E raised to the second power. And if you actually multiply all of this stuff out right here and simplify things a little bit, what you should get is 2 times e squared minus e cubed, e squared minus e cubed, 2 e cubed minus 2 e squared, and 2 e cubed minus e squared. So if you take e and you raise it to the matrix 1, negative 1, 2, 4, you're just going to get this whole junk right here. And that's uh, how you define the exponential of a matrix. So yep, hope you guys enjoyed this quick video and I'll see everyone next time.